This is a short video to discuss one of the questions that I received on my YouTube channel. The user was saying that Whenever he shuts down the GNS3 GUI, the GNS3 VM is automatically shut down and he doesn't want that. He also says that whenever he changes the memory and processor settings of the GNS3 VM and then restarts GNS3, these settings are overwritten. So please note, GNS3 gives you many options available under Preferences. So in Windows, go to Edit Preferences or on a Mac as an example, go to GNS3 Preferences. Have a look at some of the options available here. So under GNS3 VM, I've integrated the GNS3 GUI with the GNS3 VM. I'm using VMware Fusion in this example. Other options would include VirtualBox or a remote GNS3 server. The GNS3 VM that I'm using is called GNS3 VM. Notice these options, RAM and virtual CPUs. You can edit these values and change the amount of RAM and virtual CPUs allocated to your GNS3 VM. When I'm running very large topologies, I'll allocate more RAM and virtual CPUs to my GNS3 VM. So at the moment, notice the amount of RAM and virtual CPUs allocated is set by these values in the GNS3 GUI. If I change these values and restart GNS3, the amount of RAM and CPU allocated to the GNS3 VM will also change. So if you want to run a very large topology and your device supports it, simply allocate more RAM and virtual CPUs. What do you want GNS3 to do when you close the GNS3 GUI? Do you want to keep the GNS3 VM running? Do you want to suspend the GNS3 VM? Or do you want to stop the GNS3 VM? So at the moment, it's set to keep the GNS3 VM running. Just set the value that you want. Now when GNS3 starts and you're using a local GNS3 VM integration, it'll automatically start the GNS3 VM. If you don't want to do that, you could use a remote connection. You could run the GNS3 VM on an ESXi server or on packet.net by leveraging the cloud you don't need to use the GNS3 server component locally on your computer. So if you want to split those two components, you can run the GNS3 VM or server process as a remote process. Then when the GNS3 GUI boots up, it won't try and start the GNS3 VM and it won't shut the GNS3 VM down when you shut the GUI down. There are many options available in GNS3. Notice here are some more. Do you want to enable the local server? That means that you could run a Dynamips router locally rather than in the GNS3 VM. Do you want to use remote servers such as on ESXi or packet.net? What are the settings that you're using? Notice general settings here are console port ranges and UDP tunneling port ranges. What options do you want to use for packet capturing? What general options do you want to use, such as something like the style? You can change the style of GNS3 by simply going into Preferences and changing some of the preferences. GNS3 allows you to manipulate a lot of options. Where do you want your binary images to be stored? Which console applications do you want to use? Which VNC application do you want to use? So as an example, you could decide to use Chicken of the VNC, which is recommended on a Mac. You could use Royal TSX or a custom option. Various options are available here. What topology view do you want to use? What miscellaneous options do you want to use? Sometimes I get feedback from GNS3 users complaining about this feature or that feature. And often it's simply a configuration setting that you can change. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.